Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Anatomy Bites. In this video, we're going to take a look at the growth hormone. Hey, and welcome back to another Anatomy Bites. Before we keep going, be sure to click that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed. That subscribe button helps us YouTubers increase our ranking on searches and all sorts of other things. So be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and click that like button at the end of this video if you learned something today. So let's continue with the growth hormone. Now, first of all, before we start talking about the growth hormone, we have to understand a little bit, itty bitty bit, about where this thing's coming from. Now, I have entire videos on the endocrine system, which you can see at Mr. Ford's class on the YouTube channel, or go to mrfordsclass.net for the entire lecture series. But for right now, just understand that the growth hormone is coming from something called the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, you might also hear called the hypothesis. You might also hear it called the master gland. It's about one centimeter in diameter and about 0.5 to one gram in weight. It sits in the base of the skull in something called the cella turcica, Turkish saddle, of the sphenoid bone. Hey, I've got an entire anatomy bites on the sphenoid bone. Check it out if you haven't already seen it. So moving on, the pituitary gland is actually divided into two sections physiologically, the anterior lobe and the posterior lobe. So moving on past the basics of the pituitary gland, the growth hormone, which we're going to look at in this video, is made in the anterior, the front part of the pituitary. It is considered a peptide hormone. It is also known as a whole bunch of other things. So you might see growth hormone as GH, you might see it labeled as HGH, you might hear it called somatotrophin or somatotropin, you might even see it abbreviated STH. Basically, we're talking about the same thing for the most part, growth hormone. Now, some hormones in the body are very specific to target cells. They are designed to work on a specific target. Growth hormone has an effect pretty much all throughout the body. It's a very widespread effect throughout the body, especially when looking at cartilage, fat, bone, and muscle. Growth hormone is highest during puberty and decreases as you get older. Functions. In general, the growth hormone causes growth. It causes growth of all body tissues. It causes the liver and other tissues to produce something called insulin-like growth factor, or IGF-1 and IGF-2. So let's get a little more specific as far as the functions go of growth hormone. It deals with something called protein synthesis. Now, if you remember your high school biology class, you might remember people saying protein is the building blocks of the body. Well, if growth hormone is there to grow tissue, it better also create growth via protein. So it's going to create protein, which is, again, the building block of the body. You need the protein to help build stuff. So it's going to help the amino acids get into cells, and it's going to ensure protein synthesis is going to outbreak the normal breakdown of protein. So it suppresses protein catabolism. It suppresses protein being broken down there. The next one is lipid metabolism. Lipids, fats, okay? It's going to break down the fat. It's going to release the fatty acids and glycerol. Basically, your body needs fuel to survive. I have an entire series on cellular metabolism. Be sure to check it out. But in a nutshell, your body needs ATP, needs energy to keep going. It can get its energy from fat, from carbohydrates, or from protein. We don't want it to get it from protein if you're trying to build up body parts or body tissue. Yeah, I'm, I'm growing another arm. No, it doesn't work that way. So you want the protein to be spared. You don't want the protein to be broken down. And so growth hormone is going to encourage the breaking down of fats for fuel. So it's going to spare protein for being used as an energy source. Another function is carbohydrate metabolism. It's going to reduce the cell dependency of glucose. This helps it keep the glucose for the brain. So it's going to reduce the dependency of the body on the glucose. It's really trying to break up that fat there, okay? It's really trying to get the energy from the, um, the, fat, the, the fatty acids and stuff. It's going to stimulate glucose production of the liver. And finally, it's going to deal with electrolyte balance. It's going to make the kidneys retain both sodium, potassium, and chloride. 
So that's it for Growth Hormone. Be sure to check me out on social media. Click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Ford's Class, as well as YouTube and Snapchat at Mr. Ford's Class. You can find me at Facebook and Instagram on Mr. Ford's Class Learning. And until later, have fun studying out there, and goodbye for now.